Every time a state tries to do this, tens of thousands of people are purged from the voter rolls un needlessly. We should be encouraging as many people who have the ability to vote, who have the right to vote, to vote as possible, not discouraging voting. Ari Rabenhoft on this program earlier this week speaking in favor of the Monday decision by the Supreme Court not to hear an appeal from the states of Arizona and Kansas. If the court had decided to take the case, it might have allowed states to require proof of citizenship when people go to vote. Why imagine that? Joining us now from Newsmax New York, John Fun, Newsmax contributor and columnist for National Review Online. John is also the co-author of the book, Who's Counting? How Fraudsters and Bureaucrats Put Your Vote at Risk. John, thanks for your time now on Newsmax Prime. Thank you. Should we have an amendment to the title of your book? Should it be Fraudsters, Bureaucrats, and Now the Supreme Court Putting Your Vote at Risk? Well, I think the Supreme Court ruled on a mistake in constitutional interpretation, but it has the unhappy effect of limiting what states can do to preserve the integrity of their elections. Uh, Arizona and Georgia and Kansas have sincerely decided that non-citizen voting is potentially enough of a problem, and in some cases is a problem, that they want to be able to ask people for evidence that they're citizens when they first register to vote, uh, much as we ask people when they uh, register their cars that they have proof of insurance. So we have studies from two professors at Old Dominion University which looked at comprehensive survey data of people who vote in elections who say that 6.4 percent of non-citizens say they voted in the 2008 presidential election. Uh, a pollster, John McLaughlin, recently surveyed 600 Hispanics, conducted most of the interviews in English to get a broad representative sample. 13% of non-citizen Hispanics he interviewed said they had voted recently. And we also know from various studies that if you go to the various counties and find out who has been, on the, who has been asked to serve on juries, many of the people who say they can't serve on a jury because they're non-citizens turn out to be registered to vote and in some cases have voted. We've seen that in Florida and California and several other states. So the states perceive a real problem, but the federal government, especially the Obama administration Justice Department, says, whoa, you can't do that. That's discriminatory. I guess having cheating in elections is less important than someone's hurt feelings. Well, let's talk more about the situation as we confront it right now. If the states cannot require proof of citizenship, what other ways can we strive to protect the integrity of our voting system? Well, I think the states will have another bite at the apple. I think that they can launch another appeal to the Election Assistance Administration, which is a federal agency that designs the registration card. And I think they can go back and demand that at the very least, um, they should have the right to, in state and local elections, not necessarily for president, the right to ask someone if they're a citizen. Uh, other ways, voter ID laws are very popular. Uh, they've been passed in over half the states. We've also uh, gone to improve absentee ballot scrutiny and certification to make sure that people aren't registering under false identities, registering under a, a, a convenience address, and then voting in the mail so they don't no one actually has to see them. I think actually our elections are getting better because we are making efforts to make sure that it's easy to vote. Yes, we all want that, but it's also hard to cheat. John, uh, the aforementioned Ari Rabenhoft on this program the other night had uh, a few things to say about your book, Who's Counting? Listen to what he had to say, and then I want to get your reaction. I read the book, actually, by Mr. Fund and Hans von Spakovsky, and a lot of that book, a lot of the stories they tell, turned out to be untrue. Untrue? Uh, John, do you have a response to what Ari said on our air the other night? Well, let's just say that I think he's relying on the review of the book by Media Matters, the notorious pro-Hillary Clinton propaganda machine run by David Brock. Uh, they claimed a lot of the stories were untrue. Uh, no one else seems to have. Uh, in fact, other than Media Matters, I challenge him to find a legitimate or illegitimate source that says that most of the stories in that book are untrue. It's carefully researched and it has stood the test of time. Uh, and it's always interesting when you see these groups. I remember in a campaign, uh, you know, when we used to footnote things at the bottom of the screen, one of my opponents uh, used a footnote, and I looked closely and it said, his speech in front of the Democratic Convention. So that footnote somehow gave his political rhetoric some, uh, some, 
some uh, accountability or some uh, credibility. It's interesting the games that are played in politics and John Fund, we appreciate the fact that you have offered a study of what has happened to the integrity of our voting system. Again, the name of the book is Who's Counting? How Fraudsters and Bureaucrats Put Your Vote at Risk. And again, John, you have our thanks tonight from Newsmax New York. Now, you heard what John had to say in response to Ari. You heard a bit of what I had to say. We'd like to hear from you now. You can email me. Also utilize Facebook or Twitter. Or really, the best thing to do is to use our website. And you get there with this address, NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. And Newsmax Prime will continue right after this.